Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD, and it's time. It's time for game number four between Zok and Damaga in this epic series. This epic Protoss versus Zerg series in the HD World Tournament semi-final B. So far, Damaga is up two games over Zok's one game. And Damaga has really turned things around. After losing game number one, he has been able to win the last two games in succession. And I have got to say, that last game was a serious, serious mind blow to Zok. Because I feel like Zok had a chance to win that last game. I, I, I still don't know how his all-in Protoss push, combined with his probes, was able to take and whittle Damaga down to... to migrating and basically abandoning his main over to this little remote corner in the top left hand side of Tauderim Altar. I, I have no idea how that worked out, but in the end it did. And I feel like Zok had such a huge, huge advantage and really, if it wasn't for his hesitation to push into that wall of crawl, the wall of crawl right next to Damaga's new uh, new two hatcheries, then I, I feel like Zok could have crushed Damaga because he did have an army supply advantage and he had all those void rays, he had all those ground forces, it was about 120 supply to 80 supply, if I recall correctly. And I think if Zok had just committed, rather than dwaddling around with his forces and, and kind of dancing around the map, looking for bases here or there to kill, I think he could have crushed Damaga with that all-in push and he could have ended the game. But as it stands, he allowed Damaga to kind of re-macro, rebuild, and... Zok stayed on one base, and his economy, his amount of probes, was always 25 probes. So he's, he always kept it on kind of a one base strategy, and I guess he felt like, you know, I don't want to play a late macro game anymore. I just want to use what forces I have to crush Demaga, and, you know, that just ended up costing him the game. So here we are. Zok, having, uh, having lost the last game, will uh, has chosen to play on this map, and this is, of course... A uh, very big macro, macro design map. And they have both spawned cross spawn once again here on Shakur's Plateau. And man, you gotta wonder, is it gonna be another macro fest between these two guys? I hope so. It, if it is, then man, I am just gonna be completely pooped and exhausted. But I, uh, I, I just love watching these two duke it out in the extremely late game. And I can't wait to see what happens here. Damaga has once again opened up with... Um, Actually, pull first and gas rather than going for the hatchery, which is a little interesting because this map, I feel like it's big enough where you can grab the hatchery down early on. And you really don't want to open pool first because what if the Protoss goes for forge early on or grabs the Nexus right away? Then you're kind of in a sticky situation. But thankfully, Zok did not go for the Nexus right away. He is staying on one base for now. Which, uh, a little interesting, usually Protoss players will opt to immediately secure their natural because it's so easy for a Protoss to do on this map. So, Zok may be thinking about going for Void Rays again. He does have the double gas going. It seems to be his trademark build of choice, and it did work quite well in, in game number one. And um, obviously, Void Rays are, are a great unit, as I've said before, in, uh, in almost all matchups. Looks like the drone here will be picked off by the Stalker. And because there's a Stalker coming out first... Oh, no, there's a Sentry coming out second now. So... Yeah, we'll see. It looks like there's a second gateway going down, so I think Zok may go for three gate expo this game around this this time around on this game. Rather than going for the Stargate. Almost certainly not gonna be Stargate tech. But you never know. Uh Demaga, meanwhile, his economy is a little bit behind the Protoss, and that's that is because he went for the hatchery a little bit later. He has his queen now going down here, so it's gonna start to spit out some larva and um, start to ramp up that Zerg economy. But uh yeah, here we go. The drone's starting the main art over. And I feel like both these players are once again gonna play a long macro game. It is kinda do or die for Zok, cause if he loses this game, he is gonna go down to the third place matchup against, I believe, Sen? Uh, no, yeah, Sen. So he's playing against Sen. Sen was the player who lost in the semifinal A. Straylock's the player who is in the grand finals. So yeah, the pressure is on Zok. I don't know. If uh, if that's going to get to him or not, I, I would assume not because these players are such high caliber players. Pressure usually is something that they uh, face day in and day out. They're playing tournaments left and right. Um, interesting to note though, Zok has gone for two gates into Nexus, two warp gates into Nexus. And that is very intriguing. It's going to mean that he, he's going to have less sentries at his front door to defend. But I think he can kind of get away with this 
and getting the early nexus rather than throwing the third warp gate because this ramp is quite narrow and with the gateway here to help narrow it off even more four centuries should be enough to deal with uh to deal with any zerg aggression and you know you're not gonna expect aggression from Demago, who obviously favors a macro style game and he's already kind of crumbling or clumping up all of his overlords we might see the massive toilet fest again uh, I think uh, Demaga just a little bit concerned about potential void rays that may start flying out anytime soon. But that's not going to be the case. It's going to be a hallucinated phoenix here. And this is always, uh, anytime a player gets hallucination, it's almost always for phoenix play. You never really see a, a push with, with mass hallucinations, although it has worked. I re recall it working against Hydra one time. And Pain User talked about this as well in a cast we did together. Um, <laughs> Huck hallucinated a bunch of units and just pushed in and Hydra just said oh wow that's a lot of hallucinated Colossus and he just GG'd without even trying to deal with that army but that's not gonna be the case here this is a hallucinated Phoenix and I don't think we're gonna see mass hallucinations with, a, with uh, for an attack and it actually was two Phoenixes that have flown in here full reconnaissance inside the Zerg main and the Zerg natural and really he sees everything that's going on no spire you did see the Roach Warren, and we do have um, upgrades going up for Roaches here. Burrow and Glial Reconstitution, which is the um, the other upgrade for the Roach. And I think that we're going to see Demanga go for a mass Roach build here, which is viable against a 3-gate uh, or 2-gate expand, I guess you got to call it. Not a 3-gate expand, and we'll see what happens. It looks like Zok, uh, in reaction of the Roach, is going to get a Robotics Facility right away, and almost certainly going to get Observer and Immortals out of that robotics facility and there we have the chrono boosted observer and really no action yet to start this game a really slow start to an otherwise intense series maybe both these players have uh, just calmed down a little bit and are taking things a little slower this time around can't blame them there players do prefer to play a macro game if, especially if that's their forte uh sock here getting a twilight council hmm Maybe Dark Templar? I, I don't think so, though. I, I would assume that's going to be for Blink Stalkers. We do have plus one weapons coming up as well. Almost certainly going to be for Blink Stalkers. I don't think he's going to go straight into Dark Shrine. That would be a little cheesy. This early on in the game, Zergling already burrowed at that third expansion, so the Protoss player will have to get an OBS over there to get rid of that. But, uh, yeah, Blink on the way right now. Tons of Stalkers already on the map, and Zok here is switching up his strategy, will not be going for burrowed roaches. Meanwhile, we have a ton of roaches that have burrowed at the natural, and I wonder, did Demaga burrow those roaches so that the phoenix that is flying around and doing scouting right now doesn't see all these roaches? Maybe, oh man, Demaga's just got a horde of roaches right now. That is quite a bit, and a lot of times, uh, when, when players you know build a large army, usually they want to attack with it, they want to apply pressure. Uh, that's a better strategy than just building army units and leaving them burrowed at your natural because you know Otherwise that could have been minerals that could have been drones rather than just idle attacking units So I wonder what Demaga's got cooked up his sleeve here Maybe he's just waiting for plus one plus one to finish. Does he have burrowed movement? No, he doesn't so his roaches uh, I don't know if he's gonna make an attack with that. Maybe he's just being very passive right now and Zakir is gonna immediately grab his sir not grabbing this one up here, but Opting to go for the one down south, which is a little bit vulnerable to the Zerg. Remember, there are two entrances here on this version of the map of Shakur's Plateau. The rocks were actually removed, so a Zerg player can attack that. That is kind of an open nexus, but hold that thought. Zok, you're going to be pushing out with some of his stalkers and roaches. They do have blink ready. Roaches quickly scurrying, scurrying over. They have that uh, um, the speed on the, on the creep. And the force field's gonna lock a lot of those roaches away, and those force fields can be very devastating, especially since the roaches do not have burrowed movement. Oh, Demaga, get out of there before you lose those roaches as well. And he quickly scurries away. Um, Zok here, playing very safe. He was just keeping his Nexus safe. Doesn't want to allow anything to happen to that Nexus, which is something that Demaga has done very well in this series, is always attacking the third or fourth Nexus, taking it down, not allowing the Protoss Zok to get into a late macro game. And uh, that's really something that Demaga has excelled at. And, <laughs> yeah, all right, we might see the poop fests after all. Um, the Maga's just chilling with those overlords right now. Really, uh, most Zerg players will always spread their overlords out. The fact that Demaga has clumped them up shows that he's very concerned about units that need to be flying around that can pick off those overlords. And um, that's just kind of how the metagame has progressed since the series has begun. But uh, we'll see what happens here. Both these players are still macroing up. 
Zok has got some cannons going down here. Maybe he's thinking about making his own wall of cannons at his uh, at his kind of this neutral location, which will protect sort of this bottom side and can protect this top side if he ever decides to grab it. Um, meanwhile, Damaga spreading the creep very well, and both these players macroing up to almost max. In fact, Damaga is now maxed, ladies and gentlemen. He has less harvesters, but he has 200 supplies worth of, of units, and that's mostly roaches here. That has got to be scary for Zok right now. Zok, you got to remember, he has more supply. He has about 10... Um, food count in Harvester, so he really has a much diminished army compared to this Roach army, and thankfully, the Roaches do have Burrow, so they're getting out of the way of the Force Fields. Gonna go after this Immortal! Oh, more Force Fields locking those Roaches in place. Nice Force Fields by Zok, but I think Tamaga got the better of that by wasting the Sentry's energies and not really losing a single Roach at all, and he can make an attack right here at this Nexus unless these gateways go up! And even if the gateways go up, he can actually pick them off instantly. Yes, that is the case. 150 minerals down the hole. Force fields, thankfully, keeping the Roaches at bay. I don't think Damaga wants to risk burrowing them under that many force fields and coming out over this hostile side. And he's going to keep his Roaches back for now, but I think Damaga should... He should really commit to an attack right now because he's got so much minerals and gas saved up. He is maxed, whereas the Protoss army is not yet maxed. Even though there's four Immortals here, which is quite a bit, I think that Damaga should go for a trade. Um, maybe he's waiting for a different type of unit. He is getting Spire right now. Huh. Could potentially be going into Roach Broodlord, ladies and gentlemen, as he's getting Hive Tech right now. Roach Broodlord, very powerful against Stalkers and Immortals. Roach is protecting the uh, Broodlords, of course, from Blink Stalkers. And it's a, a potent and deadly combination. So Damaga may be waiting for that as he continues to flirt with death in the front of uh, Zox's um, base right here. More Force Seals getting laid down. And yeah, I think Damaga's just keeping the Sentry energy down, keeping the Protoss on his toes. I like this strategy. Um, and he's just gonna back off and look at this creep spread guys. He's, he's got a creep tumor hidden right here behind the little shrubbery Which is kind of allowed the creep to spread underneath the gateways or the warp gates and the creep spread here is just brilliant by Damaga as he goes ahead to grab his fifth base here He does have a fourth up already and Wow Damaga has not that many harvesters only 42 This is kind of the new style of Zerg play that a lot of Zergs have been uh, showing lately is rather than going for 70 drones or or you know 70 or 80 drones They'll actually cut their drone count down in favor of having a bigger army so that they can deal with the Protoss ball in the mid to late game And I, I like that strategy, but if you're gonna go for this kind of low econ 40 drone game then you have to be able to trade with a Protoss. And I think this is the reason why Damaga lost game three, is he had a low econ game, um, or excuse me, Damaga won game three. But I think the reason why Damaga was forced to abandon his top right expansion after that Protoss all in and go to the left was because he had a low econ game and he wasn't really able to deal with that Protoss counterattack and remacro his army. But hold that thought, Zealots, doing a little bit of damage to his hatchery, will instantly get picked off. Hatchery in the yellow. And Damaga e quickly scurrying down here to protect once again against more zealots. Ooh, we actually have a pylon here. That's where the threat is from. Pylon instantly gets picked off, and yes, we have a greater spire and 10 corruptors on the way, as well as a dark shrine for our Protoss player, Zok. So things are about to get heated. We're going to see some Broodlord action. No no Templar, no High Templars this time around, simply because Storm does n is not very effective against Roaches, nor are they effective against Broodlords. Tons of gateways. This is a a plethora of gateways <laughs> being warped out right now and uh, Zok almost certainly gonna rely on Dark Templars to harass the Zerg army and the Zerg economy and he is just content to sit back on his max army as he uh, I would assume he's gonna get a fifth base up pretty soon here but I think he's consented to just sit back on his max army and wait for the Zerg Oh, what do we have here? Roaches attacking themselves to make supply for the Broodlords. <laughs> Alright, and look at that drone count for Damaga. It is at 38 drones, guys. His drone count right now is so low. And I'm questioning now, why is he? Why hasn't he traded with the Protoss army if he's going for this more aggressive eco style? Rather than going for mass eco, you know, he's going for less drones from in favor of more army, but he's not being aggressive. I guess he's waiting for these Broodlords, and they're out now. They, he needs to move out, and he needs to attack, and he needs to trade with this Protoss army. And here we go. The Broodlord attack has... The assault from the air has begun. These Broodlings are so annoying for the Protoss army. And Damaga needs to press right now. He needs to push his advantage. Zok quickly throwing up Stargates and even getting a Warp Prism out here. So he is going to try to get some... As far as the Stargate goes... <laughs> 
the stalker just gets stuck up there. That sucks. Um, as far as the Stargate goes, we're going to have some anti-air. Some quick void rays, I would assume, out of Zok, so he can counter those uh, brute lords. But with only really one Stargate, and I'm not exactly sure where it is, guys. There he goes, two Stargates. So he's quickly chrono boosting out his void rays right now. Now is the time for Demaga to attack. And I'm not quite sure what he's hesitating on because he just, he will not have enough economy if he tries to play a war, a long-term game. As you guys can see already, the minerals for the Protoss player is, and the gas is vastly ahead of the Zerg. And, uh man, I guess now Damaga is thinking, okay, I do need to push. I'm going to actually go through these back rocks here and try to make something happen. Another pair of rocks getting blown away. Oh, Damaga, here's the scary thing. If he does trade right now, he will not have the economy to rebuild. And that could be really, really bad. A Dark Templar now getting warped in behind this fifth base. Look at that, guys. Really no saturation to speak of because there's just no drones for our Zerg player. Um, and this Dark Templar is gonna maybe get a queen kill. Oh, man. Almost uh, pretty much obliterating that queen. Look at the dr this larva here. So many larva. Uh, Damaga's trying to surround this DT with his roaches, and I'm not even sure why he's not building an overseer. Perhaps because he's a little bit distracted by this massive move out by our Protoss player. War Prism is gonna get taken down, and two more DTs sneaking on by. I'm not sure what happened to this Dark Templar over here. Presumably, yeah, picked off by the overseer. Two Dark Templars, though, gonna make their way uh, into the main. And we actually have oversaturation with regards to larva now. You guys heard larva dying. That means that there's too much larva. The hive cannot intake any more larva or cannot support anymore. So that is the reason why, yeah, he's just got so much larva. Good lord. And really, not enough minerals or gas banked up to make much use of it should he trade. So. I, I guess now the best strategy, guys, is just build the wall of crawl. <laughs> and I guess that's what Demaga's gonna do. Here we go. Spine crawlers getting thrown down. More drones put to the uh, put to the ultimate uh, destiny of becoming a spine or spore crawler. And um, Demaga's just gonna I guess he's just gonna wait it out and play a very passive game as opposed to as opposed to the previous game. He is just gonna be super conservative right now. We can see Zok, though, is getting bloodthirsty. He's getting itchy, and he wants to push out. He Little does he know, though, that the Zerg doesn't have much economy at all. And I think if, if Zok knew that, he might have already pushed and, and traded with the, with the Zerg army because a trade right now would be so hugely in favor of the Protoss. 3,000 minerals, 1,000 gas banked up. Changelings will be instantly picked off here. Good awareness by Zok. Uh, and Zok does have a now a fifth base up. Excuse me, that is, yeah, that is the fifth base. Damaga also on five, actually only on four bases, so really not a good situation here for Damaga. Zok is continuing to bank resources, and now he is going for the fleet beacon, guys. Oh my god, did I just see him cancel a Templar Archives? I think I did. But he is going for a fleet beacon, so ho, 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 Merry Christmas. We may just see a mothership, and good lord, that's a lot of Stargates, so... Void rays can be made instantly when the army trades. Uh, gateway units can be made instantly when the army trades, and only run robotics facilities. So I guess not too many, uh, not too many colossus can be made right away. But yeah, we do have a fleet beacon coming here, guys, and no mothership to speak of yet. And that's only because Zok has a maxed out army, so he doesn't have the capacity to support a mothership right now. But you know, who cares? It doesn't. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Um. Yeah, both these players are just really chilling right now. Zok is making, starting to make some Templars to mix in with his army as well. Why not? Get a couple of Templars here or there. The nice thing here, I want to I want to talk a little bit about Zok's Wall of Crawl. One thing that you guys might not know, and one thing Demaga might not realize right now, is when you are maxed out like this, what you can actually do is pull off all your drones, make them into like 50 spine crawlers or 42 spine crawlers, whatever drones he has here. Um, hold that thought, probes are getting sacked to make room supposedly for a mothership. Um, keep that on the production tab, but I wanna talk about, oh no, Templars. I wanna talk about, you know, if you're a Zerg player, you can sack 42 drones right now and make them all into spine crawlers. And then once your capacity decreases by 42, you can actually make like 20 corruptors or 40, uh, 24 roaches or whatever it is. You can make that army and then cancel your morphing spine crawlers, and then you will actually be over capacity. You will be at like 242. So that's something Demaga could do right now. I'm not exactly sure why he isn't. Um, I've never actually seen any player do that. 
And um, I don't know. I don't know why Demaga's not. It's something he could be doing rather than just chilling right now. Looks like he said he's gonna kill his own roaches to make room for his investors. But here we go. Zog has decided. Okay, it's time to push out the action. The fireworks have begun, and the Brood Lords are here to defend the Wall of Crawl. One corruptor getting a little bit too close for uh, for um, to be really considered safe, and it's gonna run back. Um, <laughs> Demaga is just. I don't know, man. He is just waiting and biding his time. It almost seems like he doesn't want to attack. But this is a losing strategy for our Zerg player, our 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 Zerg from Europe. You cannot chill back here on the, on this many bases and just wait because the Protoss army. Look at this now. Almost five thousand minerals and three thousand gas saved up for Zok, and only about half that in terms of minerals for our Zerg player who actually has a lot more gas. <laughs> um, but Zerg units require minerals just as much as they require gas, and I don't I don't know. Unless he's planning to rebuild infestors only, I just I just don't see this working out very well. But you never know. This these two players are such high caliber. They might be thinking of something that I'm not. Uh, here comes the changeling gonna get picked off once again and Zok getting close here. He has about four Colossus. These Colossus do need to be careful about those Broodlords, though. They, they, they take a lot of damage to those Broodlords. Zok, though, not going to commit yet again. And he is just going to fall back and wait for another day, a better day to fight. So both these players playing extremely safe and passive right now. It is almost like this is the, the demilitarized zone right here, the DMZ. The creep is one side, and the, the, the twilight area here is another side. Neither player wants to really shoot the first bullet. Neither player wants to start the, the all-out aggression because you guys know that this is like watching two guys sitting in a room, both with double barrel shotguns. And uh, whoever fires first, once you commit to that attack, everyone in the room, there could be like a whole crowd, everyone is going to be bloodied and, and downed. Um, and I guess neither player really wants to push that, that button yet or pull the trigger for fear of, I guess, making a costly mistake and losing the game. And like I said, that plays more into Zox's favor because he's got so much more economy. So he can afford to wait. He is going to pick off some of these creep tumors right now, guys. Just to recede the creep a little bit. Um, if we look at the units tab, we actually have six more Broodlords on the way for a total of 20, 19 Broodlords. So that, yeah, that's... Good lord, that's a lot of Broodlords. And he's killing off all of his roaches here. He has essentially killed off every single roach. He is building 11 more corruptors here. He has killed off his entire army in favor of Broodlords and roaches. Surprisingly, it's not gonna rely on any ground whatsoever to save the infestors. He is now getting plus two, plus two on his air as well. Oh my god, we have a mothership coming out. It has happened. I want to find the nexus that it's coming out of. Here we are. Good old mothership is on the way, and I gotta tell you, a vortex for these brood lords or corruptors would be devastating. Oh my god, that would be so bad. Um, I guess Damaga is banking on one thing and one thing only. He, by the way, guys, he's depleted all of his minerals and gas to make these brood lords. He is banking on having so many Broodlords and Corruptors when he pushes out that he is just going to overrun the Protoss. And he is not going to give the Protoss any time whatsoever to recuperate. And that can be a viable strategy, but god darn it, he has got to just go all in and commit to a massive attack. And he is waiting for plus three, plus three before he does so. But this mothership, along with her Vortex, along with whatever air the Protoss has, is going to be plus three, plus three weapons. I think that may be enough to put a stop to this kind of all-in air attack. I I don't know. We'll see what happens. The Protoss now claiming yet another expansion to get that crucial gas. Really no minerals to mine, not necessary at this point, as they are both so heavily, so deeply invested now in in their in, into the late game that, you know, anything can happen. Um where is this mothership? I know it's out here somewhere. Alright, the mothership is here. And it is ready to go. It has two armor, three shields, and two weapons. It is darn near maxed out. And it is going to slowly float on by to this Protoss army. And sham woof. Nope, not going to cloak them. So <laughs> it's going to actually chill back here for now. And I don't know. We'll see what happens with Zok. He is just waiting, I guess, for the, the Zerg army. The massive 
Corruptor Ball is moving out. The, let's just look at the units tab here. We have 33 Corruptors and 19 Broodlords. Army tab, uh, or income tab, showing 40 drones to 51 Harvesters. So 11 supply in the army, uh, basically favoring the army for the Zerg player. Surprisingly, Damaga not using that drone trick I was talking about to get 40 more supply out of his army. I think that's something he should do, but he is not. Um, and it's just going to come down to one big battle, guys. It's it's difficult to tell who is going to win. Both these players are playing so passively, and I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could talk about how, how hot it is today. It is so hot. I'm sweating so much in my room right now. Hold that thought. So hot right now that Zok has uh, decided to blaze, burn down the hatchery and put the roof on fire and kill the drone as well. Um, he has killed a hatchery down and all right was that the shotgun what was that the trigger that I was talking about is that what has pissed Damaga off he's like oh no you don't you kill my hatchery I'm going to kill you now and he is pushing out with his huge army here broodlings giving chase to a stalker they will never catch up to and this is it ladies and gentlemen it is gonna come down to Damaga and Damaga needs to make one epic attack he has no hope of, of re I don't think. He just doesn't have nearly as much saved up minerals or gas as a, as a Protoss player does. He just needs to commit to an all-in attack and never look back. And here we are! It has begun! The Corruptors are here! The Mothership is coming! The Atta oh, Vortex is gonna end this so badly! The Vortex has come down! The Corruptors have been sucked in! Only half of them, though! Demaga needs to save the rest of his Corruptors here! Don't let the rest of them get in there! The Broodlords are actually gonna fall right in, and Demaga is pushing but you guys oh the mothership goes down you guys see though that quickly Zok is re -macroing. he's getting six void right now he's quickly rebuilding whatever army has and Damaga decides to fall back Damaga is not going to commit to this attack and I think this could be a critical mistake every second he waits here it's costing him the game he cannot afford to play a macro game um uh, against the Protoss the Protoss just has too much minerals and gas saved up he needs to push right now he needs to go go he cannot afford to stop everything is max upgraded the Brutors are 3-3 three, three. Um, the Infestors even have three armor themselves. <laughs> Protoss player also maxed out as well. No new Mothership coming out. I'm a little bit sad that that Mothership didn't do more. Kind of helped the, the, the attack just a little bit. And we have Broodlings basically doing battle here. Oh my goodness! The Stalker's coming up right underneath the Broodlords. Now the Infestors coming in to lay down the fungal growth. And the storm is devastating! The Zerg air! The Corruptors have been halved in HP. All the blood here littering the floor of Shakura's Plateau. Showing... The, the absolute carnage that has resulted from the storm, but I think Damaga has enough here. He is at 172, the Protoss is at 149. He can push, but he decides to fall back yet again. He decides to fall back. Oh no, why is he falling back? You guys can see Zok desperately making Archons, and oh wow, look at all the Stargates that are chrono boosting out Void Rays. Seven Void Rays on the way to complement the 15 or so Void Rays already out here. We are going to have a Void Ray Fest. Damaga does have Corruptors, but Corruptors are actually not that good against Void Rays. Mutalist would be a much better idea. We have the nurses here. I guess this is the medic kind of transfusing the Broodlords. And oh no, Damaga decided to make more Broodlords, which is only going to make them that much more vulnerable to the humongous Void Ray tech switch. I feel like Damaga should expect the Void Ray tech switch here. He should know that Void Rays are coming. And why has he decided to make more Broodlords? I think this is yet again a costly mistake. And it's hard to tell right now what Damaga is thinking. Who has <laughs> placed a double spire for upgrades. But um, it's really hard to tell what Damaga is thinking right now. Why has he decided to go with more Broodlords? Just counting out the Corruptor count here. There are 21 Corruptors to 19 Void Rays. And tick for tack, a Void Ray kills a Corruptor. Easily hands down. So... Really, for Damaga to come out ahead in an air battle, he is going to need 1.5 to 2x amount of Void Rays in order to deal with that threat effectively. And that's not considering the uh, Templars on the ground, which, like you guys saw in the last big battle, absolute carnage. Just demolishing the the, the Corruptors and, and having their health to nothing. <laughs> Hold that thought, we have uh, the Wall of Crawl continuing to build here. The drone count now down to 27 drones. My goodness. Uh, fungal growth now getting laid down. Fungal growth is the one, the redeeming factor here for Damaga. He doesn't really have that many uh, investors, though. So his fungal growth count is limited. A hatchery here gonna go down, but Damaga doesn't really care. There's no 
drones there whatsoever anyways. In fact, all the drones are down here. This is the only expansion that's mining and maybe a couple here. But, uh, oh, a little, a couple Archons here getting caught off guard. Here comes the fleet of Void Rays, though. And I think Damaga saw those Void Rays. If he's smart right now and he saw all those Void Rays, he should know right now he needs more Corruptors. Yes, he's building six, seven, two Corruptors, remacroing that Corruptor army. And honestly, right now, I feel like maybe he should just sack all of his drones in favor of Corruptors. I mean... Seriously, he needs so many corruptors now. Maybe investors as well, but here we go. Fungal, those corrupt, those void rays, and they are gonna get stuck right there. The void rays losing about half their shields. Another fungal would be absolutely beautiful right now. But the storm preventing the corruptors from running in the storm. Defensive storms are right there to allow Zok to take out this hatchery and keep the corruptors at bay. Now the corruptors running in. A fungal growth would be beautiful right now, but no fungals, no investors in sight, and the storm is destroying these corruptors. They are have all been whittled down. The pro ground has also been destroyed as well and on the production tab only six corruptors being rebuilt right now unfortunately not enough an infestor burrows underground no doubt to launch a fungal growth once it gets 75 energy another fungal would be really nice right now to deplete all the shields of those void rays but darn if if <laughs> if damaga had like six more infestors he could have fungled the crap out of those void rays but uh, as it stands the void rays escape with their shields and their health intact. They're gonna fall back here to regroup with yet again more Void Rays, a Mothership, and nine. Nine counted, nine High Templar. And Damaga, I think, has run out of gas. Officially, he has no more gas. He has 23 Harvesters. The gas has been completely depleted out of the only mining hatcheries he's got. Oh my god, which means, look at that. On the Income tab, he has zero gas right now. He's not making any gas whatsoever. He's going to have to import his gas from another country. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not possible in StarCraft 2. Um, <laughs> he's going to have to build like an offshore refinery or something uh, um, <laughs> off the Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico or something. But uh, not the case. What, are we, what the heck is going on here? Um, I think it must have been a Dark Templar. I don't know what the <laughs> So many broodlings just died. But... Um, Damaga has no more gas. He has 25 gas, and that's it, which means there are gonna, that, that is all the corruptors we're going to see for the rest of this game. So now Damaga has decided to build only score crawlers with what drones he has left. In fact, he has about, I would say, I don't know, it's like eight spore crawlers. Spore crawlers can be nice, but uh, not, I don't know, not against this many void rays. That's a full control group of void rays, along with archons. God, good lord. This is the late game army that you never see. Insert versus Protoss, and uh, once again, it's gonna come down to one big attack. 20 Harvesters to 50 Harvesters. The Zerg army actually at 160, whereas the Protoss is at a max of 200. That cannot bode well for our, for Damaga. He is going to do some damage with these Broodlings. What he needs to do is continually snipe the ground forces and whittle the ground forces down with his Broodlords and hope that he can somehow get some gas accumulation going. In fact, he should just get all of his drones mining gas right now. Oh, a Dark Templar snipes yet another hatchery. And these hatcheries now are starting to get a little costly because those hatcheries mean fresh gas. Hold that thought, Void Ray's running in once again. What is going on here? Broodlings are getting decimated. Oh yes, nice fungal growth. Locking down some of those uh, Void Rays, but the Storm getting laid down once again, forcing the Corruptors to retreat, which now leaves all of these Broodlords open. The Broodlings have swarmed everything on the ground. That is a testament to the Broodlords' power, but it does not matter if you have no anti-air to hit these Corruptors, and these Broodlings, or Broodlords, all of them sadly are going to go down. They cannot hit the air. They're retreating over the Spore Crawlers. There's a five Spore Crawlers back here, and GG calls to Maga. What a game. That was a 47 minute and 10 second brawl in Shakura's Plateau. Oh, oh man. What a battle by, by Zok and Damaga. Damaga, I gotta say, I feel like this game kind of dropped the ball a little bit, let a couple of things go down in the wrong way, and had opportunities that he missed out on. And um, I feel like he it was his game to lose, and he did lose it indeed. So now the series is tied up 2-2. Which means we are going, ladies and gentlemen, to a final match to determine who will be playing Straylock in the Grand Finals. $1,000 for first place, $500 for second.